running shop from the superintendent's office now. Yeah, got my superintendent's office set up here. Good to go. <laughs> Tell y'all something pouring these small rooms takes up more time or the same amount of time as pouring a big room. I mean, it does. In fact, tighter corners, more small pieces, um, tighter workspace to try to work in. Pouring a small room takes a little bit more time or the same amount of time as a big room does. Uh, they're gonna get this uh, CR finished up. We've been just kind of putting it off. I had a few things I needed to do down in one corner there, dealing with some electrical from the existing garage down below and all. So we just kind of been putting it off and moving on around here doing some other things, but we are finishing it up now. So that's going on. That'll be poured this morning and the CR will be complete as far as having its base walls around it and door opening. It's got a window opening already now as well. Then this window buck here will go up on this wall as soon as they finish over there uh, pouring concrete this morning. Probably after lunch, they'll put, flip this thing over. It's upside down now because of course this is where we let our concrete uh, air come up out of our concrete from the bottom and the cream rise and come up through these holes and get a nice solid bottom in this so this will be our next place to set up finishing out all of the front exterior wall but it's coming right along it's coming right along then our next steps of course going to be the pour in the interior walls defining the rooms right here that will move along great those walls are actually easy to get done as well yeah, from right there to there will be all that we have left. Up here in the front, Ambin, good morning. And Uncle, they're up here uh, building a beam across the front right up here at the very front of the house. Hey, Amy, you know we need to extend that steel up, you know? Yeah. Is it easier to do it now? We also worked here preparing for a little front wall up here. We had debated our original plans. Let me back up here. Our original plans was to have a window and a door there, and that's what's on our blueprints. Then we considered putting just a solid glass wall with a luminal frame. And uh, we could do whatever because this wall is just a fill wall. Um, it doesn't have any kind of structure supporting on it or anything. But then we changed our minds and decided to stick with our original plan, putting a door coming out on this terrace right there, just a standard traditional door, and putting a UPVC window in right here. So I have already bought for this opening also a four foot by five foot UPVC window. So this is the reason the steel set up in here for it like it is right now because that window and that door opening. We'll take that same four by five window buck that's gonna get poured in the front wall. And when we finish with it there, we'll knock it out, transfer that buck here and use it again. Everything getting used again and again same thing here we have a door buck that's already built that'll come out of one of these openings behind me and it'll go right here and get used again it's a windy day here as you can see by that tarp blowing around they're trying to get a tarp set up to uh somebody trying to pass through here i don't know who that is I don't know if it's a delivery company or what. <laughs> That's why I used to take my truck and block the street.
nice little setup um, but they're trying to get set up for uh, mixing concrete later where they got some shade right there it's all coming along and all of these are epoxied in as you see you see that right there every hole that we drill we put epoxy in the hole we don't completely fill the hole but we put a good bit of it down in there and then we drive the steel into it until it and let it smash out and you see that these are epoxied in same down on the floor as well epoxied in Over here, this wall, you can also see they're all epoxied in there. So now what are you going to do with this mile? Your first thing to do is you need to add water, just a little bit of water. And that's so you can it's, extract the coconut milk yeah, out of it? Coconut milk. And it's just the way that's according uh, how many dishes you, you're going to make it, you know. So you can kind of, I feel it's really moist right now with that shaved up. I can feel it mm -hmm. on my fingers, like the oil from it. So you have, if you have only like, example, if you make a quinilao, you need mm -hmm. to add water. You need to just, uh, what it is, Put it know, direct. direct it. Yeah. You squeeze it and whatever extract that one, it, you're gonna use it. But of so course- So like if I squeeze this, <laughs> yeah, right there, see that? Yeah, so if I squeeze that, you see it come out. And so that's what adding no water at all. That's just natural like it is. I'm gonna squeeze more here. You see all that come out. That's fresh coconut milk, kind of like a coconut cream. So then what you're going to do here, though, you're going to add a little bit of water so you can get more extracted from it. Yes, like like, like uh, the first thing you need to do is just add a little bit in water. And then they call the one that we have a second uh, add for water, right? You need to separate that, the thicker and then the, the second one. It's kind of light already. The milk more, yeah, more, more diluted. Yeah, more diluted. Yes. Nice. Well, man, I'll tell you what, look at that. You see that? That is just some fresh goodness right there. She has, she's tired from scraping. She don't have a helper here right now. Oh, her helper just arrived. Uh, Jonah Lynn went to the market for her to pick some things up. It's brown out here. No power. No air con. No fans. No TV. No Wi Fi. Well, not for us. <laughs> not for us. Yeah, we still have power. We still have power. The refrigerator's still going. Yeah, everything's still going for us. Uh, our Wi-Fi's going. Our TV still going. See the light. Yeah, that's the beauty of this. See, I just love having a solar. So, uh, Melinda, she didn't know. I mean, we don't know until somebody tells us, you know. And so we're doing our thing our life is normal over here you know air con going fans going uh you know wi-fi going everything everybody you know refrigerator everything's normal life here 
and then Melinda finds out from next door in the community, hey, they're all over in Brown Island. And Melinda's face lights up every time because she goes, I didn't know it. You know, I didn't know that there's a Brown Island. Because we continue trucking right on. Yeah, we do. So that, that's pretty cool. And it's even uh, a pretty overcast, cloudy day right now. Now, uh, my second inverter down here, that will double my power. But um, I don't have double the storage on my battery bank, though. And uh, I don't have double the panels. So it would be able to deliver power for more items within a house. But I don't have um, enough battery bank to back up when there's a brownout and say it's at nighttime to carry those items on through. So we would, we'd still need to increase our solar panels and we're still going to need uh, to increase a battery bank on that. Now, that being said, I have a generator outside and I haven't hooked it up here yet because all of this, everything is temporary. This garage is a garage. It is not a house. And so, as I've said before on this, picture this as a temporary construction power pole. You know, you're, you're building on your lot and you get with a power company and you get a temporary meter set and a pole and power. Subway in the U.S., it's that way here in the Philippines. Well, that's our temporary power pole right there. Once the house is built, these won't be in the room with us no more. They're going to be in their own room upstairs on the top floor. There will be a mechanical room, electrical closet. There's going to be a room made down over onto the side that's going to house the generator as well. This has the contacts already built in it to start a generator if it needs additional power. So uh, all of that will be put in place once the house is built. Right now, we don't have everything like it goes. You know, everything is a little bit of mayhem still. Just like up here, there's a lot of stuff seen not finished there for electrical. It's because we need to wait on that until the house is done and run all that correctly. So this is just temporary living quarters. This is actually my garage. There's a roll-up garage door there. And there's a roll-up garage door there. And, uh, and then when we're not here and we're overseas, this is where my Hilux Surf and the new Nissan pickup will be parked inside here safe and sound and away from salt and people and elements and all of those things nice and safe i just want to cover that but it's pretty exciting always and i always like to share it in videos uh, when we find out there's a brown out in the community and we're not browned out no but I, I will be honest with you all i'm not happy with that lead acid battery bank of course I have to go check the water in them. You've got to make sure you put the right stuff in there that you don't kill the battery. Uh, the steel water. Yeah, you got to do that. Then, the capacity is not that great. It's like, eh, you know, so-so. Anyway, I'm not happy with the lead acid batteries. I'll just be honest. But they're still considered my best choice at the moment as they say here in the Philippines, ATM. ATM at the moment here in the Philippines, they're still my best option economically. So we can go down this rabbit hole about the do-it-yourself or saying you can buy these cells and you can put them together and you can build your own battery and you can put this uh, battery management system on there that you buy, this BMS as it's called from Joe Blow over here and these batteries over there and you can build all of it. It still costs money, and I want something reliable even if I'm not here. That I can leave this power on, even when I'm on the other side of the world, leave the solar going, and that way my cameras and router and refrigerator can stay going. I want something reliable even when we're not here. Not meaning even if we're back in Texas, I want something reliable. If we decide to go visit Singapore when the world opens back up, or Vietnam, or Thailand, or Australia, or wherever. Those are the list of places we have to go, by the way. And uh, I want it to where if we decide we're gone for a month, I don't have to be here checking batteries. 
and that is pretty important and I don't want to depend on other people to check the batteries or they pour the wrong stuff in there or they don't clean off the top and they let trash fall in I want something that's really low maintenance and not a fire risk and I still feel that something that doesn't have a ready-made properly tested BMS for that particular battery is a fire risk and I don't want that. I don't want to be on, on the other side of the world and they say the fire department had to come here and tear my house up to go on top and try to put out some super hot burning lithium batteries. So uh, I'm, I'm all right with the lithium batteries, the LiPo and all, but I don't want uh, to spend the money that they're asking for some of them that are available in this country. I looked up, and, and if you all can uh, find something that's available in this country, not something I have to import from the U.S., I don't want to be putting batteries in a ballot buying box, and they get confiscated along the way. Now they say, oh, you're not supposed to have those in there, and they take them, and of course they just got a very high dollar battery, and you got nothing. I don't want to run risk and gambles, okay? Of course, you're going to tell me all about the batteries that are available all over the planet. I don't need to know about batteries that are available all over the planet that I have to go through risk and chances to bring here. I need to know about a real deal solution that don't cost a fortune that has its own BMS that is available right here in the Philippines. It already has BMS installed. That is what I need. So if anybody has information on some good batteries that are not lead acid that are available in the Philippines and with a ready-made battery management system on them, please comment or please email me. My email is in the description of very many of these videos and let me know. And I would appreciate that because uh, that is something that I'm not happy with the lead acid is maintaining the water levels these particular batteries, um, they don't have a lot of wiggle room on top of the cell before the water level drops and hits that cell. So you really do have to keep an eye on these particular batteries, these uh, Motolite uh, solar batteries they have here. I feel like it should have had a little bit more reservoir room over the top of those cells uh, to give you more space uh, before those batteries got dry in case you're not around. So that, that is a downside, and I just want everyone to know that. Um, I've, I've got those Tesla batteries back in the U.S., and I would really like to have those Tesla batteries here, but they need a proper BMS. Now, there is a company that built a plug-and-play BMS that plugs in where the Tesla car BMS went. Um, of course, you have to spend money, and those Tesla batteries are not cheap, but... I would really like to have those here and I'm using them back home on a 48 volt system. Um, here I would have to take them out of a series and put them back in a parallel and use them on this 24 volt system. But um, please, anybody's got information, if you're here in country, you're a Filipino, you're a foreigner that has dealt directly, not no hearsay, with a particular battery and you know it to be good and it has a factor BMS, let me know.